is good, Greg Gang. We're here today. I have my bow. And we have some explosive tipped arrows. Now, this is kind of crazy because usually stuff like this isn't legal. But this time it is, somehow. They're pretty epic because you can shoot them out of any bow. A crossbow, compound bow, recurve bow. I don't know, slingshot maybe. But anyways, first let me show you the premise. First, you have an arrow. Pretty basic. And then you have this. This is the explosive tip that, you know, makes it explode. You screw it on just like any other broadhead. But then just this right here is not really going to do much. You actually have to unscrew the top and insert the load, being a 357 Magnum shell. Now basically what happens, you just load it in here, and then whenever something impacts this, this little pin impacts the primer, and it explodes. Now you just pick a target and then blow it up. That target for us, five gallon bucket full of water. <laughs> Alright, that should be good enough. I don't know how accurate I'm going to be. I've not shot my bow in like six months. We got this little bucket over there. We're going to try it out, see if we can, uh, well, explode it, I guess. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Oh, there we go. It exploded it real good. Let's go check out the damage. I think it worked. Here's the arrow, or at least what's left of it. It worked perfectly, guys. It shot out the, uh, it shot out the bullet. It made a pretty solid hole right there, and now my bucket's actually draining out of water, which is okay. And, uh, I guess our next target's just gonna be right there on the bottom. I'm actually just gonna reload it here, because I can, I guess. Pretty simple to unload. I just unscrew it, just like I was doing earlier. Slap in a new shell into the cart, in the new cartridge, and screw it right back on. Where did it go? Kind of surprised that it didn't, like, bust the tip of my arrow, which I'm very happy about. What's up, guys? We actually got a real life exploding tip arrow here and then we got a bucket right out there with a slow motion camera watching it here we go hopefully nothing um messes up too bad dude what in the world bro why in the world did the arrow come back and hit me it was like three feet from my leg bro these tiktoks are getting dangerous this one this one definitely did a whole lot more damage it popped him one good time son that's kind of crazy i keep hitting low i'm just gonna tilt it over that way again and uh shoot it again you know all right boys this is my last one then after that i'm gonna show you another improvised explosive device i kind of came up with <laughs> it's pretty epic too it might even be better than this one. hopefully i can hit it a little bit more center this time let's do some damage That was a really good one. Those pieces are wild, dude. They come right back at you. Honestly, this is kind of dangerous. I should probably say don't try this at home. That one even scared Chad a little bit. Nothing scares Chad, man. He's not afraid of anything. The bucket smoke him. Dang, dude. Wonder if they had any exits. Oh my goodness. Dude, no way. This thing went straight through it. It literally shot the bullet and it went all the way through. Plus through the water. I'll be honest, guys. That doesn't even make sense to me. But I'm really glad that it happened because that's cool. I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm not complaining complained about that second arrow coming straight back at me. But besides that, I'm chill. Okay, guys, we're gonna be testing a theory right now. Don't try this at home, but I saw it in a movie, okay? And I think it has a possibility to work. First thing, I'm gonna light a candle. And next up comes the semi-sketchy part. As you see, I got a slingshot. Like I said a second ago, don't, don't, don't try this at home, okay? I'm a trained professional. Anyways, then I got a firecracker. I'm gonna see if I can make a firecracker launcher. I don't know if this is classified as a destruction device. It may be. Better not be. Don't try this at home, guys. Not really a good idea. Because what I was thinking, these fireworks are actually waterproof. So their fuses are amazing and they can withstand being launched super far. You do got to be super careful though because a lot of things can go wrong as you can imagine. Holding basically explosives. And if something happens and maybe you drop it or you forget to let go, that could happen in your hand. And that's not a good thing at all. There we go too. That's really cool. Wow. Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed that. This video so far was just a bunch of random stuff thrown together. But it is better than no video. I'll say that for sure. We got something. We don't know how big it is. Dude, no way. That's a sucker. No, it's a bass. We caught a largemouth bass, bro. Oh, my Lord. What in the world is he doing? What do you say? No. This little cast nothing. I don't know about you guys, but I think we put him in the pool pond. I mean, I really didn't want to put another bass in the pool pond, but since this guy's literally so small, I think he'll work out. How in the world? This was my first cast, too. It just so happens the best time to cast net is in muddy water. That is weirdly true. I guess because they can't see the net to run away from it. What's his name? Marv? He's itty bitty. Little Marv looking thing. Bring the camera just in case something happens. 
We may catch him more. We got another one. No way. Dude, what in the world? This one's this one's a bluegill. This one's a pumpkin seed. No, we got two. What in the world's going on? Hey, it's a Eric, lucky cast net. Eric, it's a lucky compass cast this net. This is the first time we've used this. It says Redfield on it. All right, guys. So just if you just if you don't know what we're talking about, that was actually the first cast where he caught the bass. That was our second cast. We didn't make an intro because we honestly didn't even know what was going to happen. These aren't just your normal bluegill. They're super colorful with the special tips. You know why? Why? Because radioactive. Marine pollutant. There's fish everywhere in here right now. There really is. There's... I bet it's because it's getting washed down. I like it though. All right, Joe, explain it. I think it's an expert cast net thrower though. I think it is too. Oh. We may have something three for three if there was like a feeding frenzy going on. No oh way. my lord. They're all big. That's a bass. That's a bass. No, no I'm sorry, I lied. Oh, what in the world? That's three for three and four fish. And you never see these when the water's clear. No, they're not never here. Because you can look around and tell they're not here when the water's clear, but. It also helps that this is a really good cast. Can we go four for four? I don't think so. Probably not. Right here. Right, right here is four California. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. That's too bad. Oh, 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 got it. No, oh, no. Oh. What in the world? Dude, that's huge. That's a sucker. No. It's about to get out. No. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would have fun. It was a sucker. He was huge. It's all right, we'll get him. What was wrong with that now? Have a hole in it? No, it just didn't get him perfect where the where it wasn't perfectly round, I guess. It's all right, we'll get him. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. It is a new day, guys. What we're doing right now, I don't know if y'all can see that or not. We have a minnow trap in the pool pond. We're just, I'm, you know, I, I don't know, guys. All the creeks, there's nothing in them. I went down there this morning, looked around, nothing was happening. But I still wanted the minnow trap, you know I mean? We actually got a GoPro in there so that we can see the minnows we catch. And to be completely honest, guys, this is the only place I know that has minnows right now. That drought last year really killed everything. Guess the cool thing about this is that we kind of know exactly what we're going to catch. So we know we're not going to catch anything bigger than a gator. What are you doing, Chad? Just chilling? Okay, that's cool. Yes, sir. All day. Let's go, baby. In the meantime, there's really not much we can do, but, you know, just kind of wait for the minnows to go in there. So, we'll see you whenever it's time to pull it out. I do want to let you know that we are having a little bit of a sale. These items right here, if you use promo code MAY10, you'll get 10% off these until, you know, the end of May. And out all these items and personally my favorites are gonna have to be the 360 tackle box and then the kg waterproof storage boxes that, that actually fit in there use promo code may 10 and you can get 10 percent off both of those items what is chad doing my boy's just over there chilling looking for some corn and now he sits down and he's doing some weird head movements i don't really understand it interesting place to chill i will say that just right beside of a barrel and a pull pond and a tractor from the 1400s all right boys moment of truth how many you think we got uh, i think we got two honestly i thought we'd add more because there i know there's more in here and y'all do too because y'all was with me when i put them in here i know there's at least 10 minners in here and this thing's been in there longer than two hours it's been in there literally all day one looks like a little bluegill and then the other one looks like some kind of weird shiny looking thing a shiner maybe i don't know why we didn't catch anything but enjoy this video of well the fish actually going in it It is the next day, guys. I'm just out here riding around. I don't know what I'm doing, but I saw a gigantic black snake, and it went right under this tent. Now, he did end up getting away from me. Oh, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Oh, my goodness, he's massive. There he is, there he is, there he is. I don't know if y'all can see him. He's going right through there. He was big, though. I did bring my pistol, even though I honestly had no intention of killing him. I don't really think he was bigger than the last one, but he was still really big. The thing about this is that we're, like, nowhere near chickens, so he, uh, he really didn't have any reason to die. But since I just now noticed this big piece of tin, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over, because there actually may be some more under there. Hopefully not. Well, hopefully there is. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a toss-up. It's do you want content or death? Kind of leading on content. Looking under there, I don't see nothing. At least y'all saw him. He was pretty massive. And he's still in there somewhere, but I can tell you right now, I am not about to go look for him. Just in case you thought I was. Now, for all you guys saying right now in the comments, you know, dude, why didn't you stink and get out your cage hatchet and tomahawk him in the face and eat him? I would like to, I would really like to do a snake catch and cook, but... I don't know. I don't really want to eat a black snake because they're kind of, they're, they don't do anything bad except for eat eggs and stuff. They actually eat copperheads. So black snakes are the good snakes. Unless, of course, you think that the only good snake is a dead snake. They ask you how you are. Eating. Well, by golly, I just seen a groundhog. We're seeing all kinds of critters today. One cool thing about groundhogs is they're literally in season year round. But then again, I'm not really, I'm not really like, not really in the mood to eat 
a groundhog right now, so. But if I wanted to, and if I was ready to roast him over a fire, I definitely could. We're about to see a train, if you didn't figure that out already. Oh yeah, big train looking coming through here. Oh yeah, what a beauty. What a beautiful sight here in Kentucky. I'm gonna set y'all right there and show y'all a time lapse because this, oh, well, never mind. It's over. I was about to do a time lapse for y'all to show y'all how these trains actually are 60 miles long. They're even longer if you're waiting for them to go across the road. Oh snap, oh snap, Mr. Groundhog's back. I don't know if y'all can see him. I don't even know if I can see him. He's like right there. He's not moving much though. Hey, hey, move around. Try to make a video. Oh, there he goes. He's moving. He's moving. I hope y'all can see this. See ya. Can y'all see ya? Right now, we're looking at the majestic groundhog. They really don't do much. They mainly just deep flowers, dig holes, and get hit by cars pretty frequently as well. If you're not very familiar with groundhogs, I would compare them to a land beaver. He's just eating a flower. What a weirdo. <laughs> Only other thing I know that eats flowers, Chad. They're not the most eventful animal. They don't really do much. Hey. Run around or something. Do something crazy. Do backflip. Show us a trick, brother. Here he comes. He's gonna come down. He's gonna come down. He's gonna do a video with me. May even do a podcast. Anyways, he went behind a tree. I think he declined the interview. Well, I tell you what, we're just gonna continue the safari. We got a squirrel next. I don't know if y'all can see him. He's a... Uh... Well, I don't know. I don't see him either. He was over there, though. I promise. People... If y'all want to see a Kentucky safari, let me know and me and April will come out here. We will, we will show you every animal that walks Kentucky. With the exception of Bigfoot, of course.